Okay. So in our customer everyday process, you know, uh, we'll use a reference data set while creating the customers. You know, we are assigning this reference data to the customer so that the customer is accessible to a specific business units. So in general, what is in a reference data set? So set set is nothing but you know it's contain a specific values, right? In general, a set is nothing but specific values. So here also while creating any customers okay just we are grouping for that customers into one of the set just grouping the values nothing but grouping customers grouping customers into one of the set which is a reference a data set so whatever set is there this set to a business unit in generally okay in real time for example if you have us business unit and you have uk business unit and india business unit so let's assume we have three business unit so in real time how this client or functional resource are creating this customer number for us business unit they will create Yes, a reference data set. Yes, reference data set. And for UK, they will create, you know, UK reference data set. And for India, they will create, you know, India reference data set. So before creating the business units, okay, first they will create a you know, reference data sets. First, they will create a reference data set. When they are creating business units, okay, they will assign these reference data sets to our business units. In general, uh, other than this US, UK, India reference data set, we do have common reference data set. Common reference data set. Okay. If this US business unit is assigned with a common reference data set and UK and India. These three business units are assigned with, you know, common reference data set. Then whatever we are creating the customers, those customers are accessible for across three business units. For example, I created one of the customers, you know, A customer and here I'm created the B customer. A customer and B customer and you know C customer. Okay. Now, if you want to you know create a AR invoice, if you want to create a AR invoice with a A customer for this UK business unit, so it's not possible because for UK business unit here we are assigned you know UK reference data set. So while creating the customers. Okay, you are while creating this B customer, you are assigning a UK reference data set to the customer. Then this B customer belongs to only UK BU. Only UK BU. If you want to access this B customer to the US BU or US BU, then you need to assign US reference data set to this B customer. Then only this B customer, uh, you know, can accessible for UK and US. In the same way. If you create a C customer with India reference data set, then this C customer is not accessible for UK and US BU. Again, if you want to use this customer for US and UK BU, then these US reference and UK reference data set we need to assign for C customer along with India reference data set. Okay, otherwise, if you use common reference data set for A, B, C customer while creating the customer if you use common reference data set to these three customers okay then these three customer you can use anywhere in us uk and india business unit because this common reference data set is associated with these three business units so here's uh, logic is very simple so whatever reference data sets are associated with the business unit those customers we can accessible for against the business unit Okay. This is so, yeah, now this 
customers are uh, we can also associate these customers with the bu in r12 it was not possible right but r12 it was independent of the operating unit yeah independent of the operating unit here there is no operating unit concept so we are uh, oracle is implement a new feature reference data set okay so this customer is uh, not you know we are there is no relationship with the customer with the business units always in our saas application this we are correlating with customers against your reference data, reference data set okay. because again these reference data sets are associated with the business units now we'll see uh, how we are creating the reference data sets and how they are assigning these reference data sets to the business units so here just navigate to setup and maintenance Just navigate to global search. Here, manage reference data set. Here, manage reference data sets. Just you can search with you know click on the search so that whatever possible created reference data sets are there. Just we could say all your reference data sets. So these are the reference data set. By default, we do have common reference data set. along with if you see here something india test business unit sorry india test us reference unit something inst us business unit set something you know here texas us reference data set and the way you know you can create all your reference data sets something uk one business unit it's a description is set name oracle business reporting uk so always in our application we are referring set code only if you want to know the set name then just navigate to manage reference data set here you can find you know set name so always we are going to refer set code in our uh, fba sheets while creating the customers now these reference data sets are associated with the business units so how they are associated now we'll see just we'll try to open one more session again set up and maintenance there no need to navigate in the global search just you can manage business unit you can search with manage business unit here manage business unit set assignment just select this here select the scope against your task select the business unit select and add apply and go task here do we have any information okay just open any one business unit select any one business unit something abc business unit See, this is the business unit definition. This business unit is associated with this common reference data set, which is common reference data set, which is a default set, which is common default set. If you use here A B C reference data set, I guess we do have here. now this is you know abc enterprise here abc enterprise reference data set or abc something ent set is here if you use this abc ent set here then whatever customers are created against abc ent set those customers are accessible for only ebc business unit if you select any other business unit you are not able to see those customers here they are associated with the common reference data set so that all the customers are accessible for this abc business unit nothing but whoever the customers are created with the common reference data set in the same way just select other business units we'll see any specific reference data sets are associated or not
again this is a common set see here something acc india north bu is associated this business unit associated with something acc india north set this is one of the reference data set if you create the customers against this reference data set then this customer is accessible for this business unit only okay, now you can search with something acc 01 here acc 01 acc india north set so while creating the customers we'll use this set code it's clear reference data and sets and the business units vijay so once we assign a data set uh, to the business unit we cannot change it afterwards right we can change i guess we can change i guess uh, i am not sure exact but we can change there is a provision to change this functional sources you know always maybe maybe some role needs to be added to the user not role yeah uh, a, from they will create a task sorry they will create a project under project they will create a task another task there is a provision to you know update this uh, reference data set yesterday i have been shown right you know one of the they implementation be, project okay. yeah in the manage implementation project just first they will create a project under project they will you know assign this manage business unit assignment task there uh, oracle has provided a provision to update the information okay okay so this is about reference data set and the business unit now to create a customer we need reference data set first we will create a customer in our you know application just you know uh, for receivables as you know we need account receivable specialist and account receivables manager two job roles we need we require in order to create you know customers and your invoices this is the receivables and this is the billing the task pane you can identify in the customer section create customer manage customer upload customers from spreadsheet and manage data import so these options are available for us for the customers okay here just click on create customer here just you can provide customer type is organization if you create any contact then you can go for person so if you select an organization nothing but a customer something tell us customer something and here you can provide account description something not required account type external or internal you can provide anything external something this is not a mandatory here account address set account address set is nothing but referring your reference data set so all the reference data sets are available for you here just i am using using abc ent set which is abc business unit reference data set something abc ent reference data set and you can provide the your site name something this site provide some address here okay and here address purposes just you can create address purpose nothing but you know site use whether build to or ship to here purpose you can use something build to if you want to create any one more site use you can you know create ship to like that we do have build to ship to sold to and deliver to most of the times we can use you know build to 
deliver to install date and ship to and sold to. Ship to. And if you want to make as a man as a primary, here there is an option just to enable the primary. Now this is the primary build. That's it to create a customer. Just save and close before this. Just copy this name. <coughs> Cannot save this address because at least one of the address element is invalid because some geographic validations are applied in this instance. The reason it's giving you know address validations. Now just you can yeah, search with your customer, <coughs> which is organization name. Now see this is your GP2 Dell US customer, which is you are able to see the first table information here, the first in your UI screen, whatever you are seeing, the first row here, which is goes to you know headjet parties, headjet location, headjet party sites. This information which is populated in headjet parties, headjet party sites, and headjet location. And this is your Edget Cust accounts, and this is your Edget Party Sites Universal, and followed by Cust Account Sites and Cust Account Site Users. This is. If you want to know this customer is, this customer site is associated with ABC EMT Business Unit. Sorry, Business Data Set. If you want to create one more, just click on the New here. Again, you know you can add your common reference data set so that. Is acceptable for common website to something line one line two US and the postal code. Just you can populate anything here, and you can use you know address purpose, which is site use, first account site use. Something you know, built. just save the record. So why common data set is not coming? This is common set. It's a common set. You should see all the data sets. Why they are not able to see the common data set here? When we see, we are not able to see the common data set. Not sure why we are not able to see the common data set. Yes, you know, you can select any one here. In general, in real time, we do have you know common reference data set. Can assign anyone something see this Sam Corp US set. Just save the record. So for address information, we are passing data set, right? Sorry? For address information only, we are giving data set. Yeah, for only site right. purpose only. Yeah, for okay. this because so customer customer, customer uh, we can access from any BU, but only those customer sites we can access from from specific BU, right? No, uh, you can because add we are 
item or for this only this reference data set only because again this reference data is yeah. associated with the business units yeah but for uh, for sites uh, means for address detail only we are passing uh, this address set right the yeah, address set but you are not able to see the business uh, business unit this customer for any business unit you are not able to see this customer okay okay Hi Vijay. If so we are saying if we are saying common data set, then we can access. Then you can. Yeah, you can. Just click on that. It's not opening. Again, here Billy. This is for create customer creating. This is manage customers to search your customers. This is upload customer for spreadsheet. Just click on this; it will download one of the spreadsheet for us. A download customer spreadsheet template and upload customer from spreadsheet. Here, just click on download customer spreadsheet template. Just open this. you know this is this customer template is which have you know for a, you know specific a minimal customers will go for uh, this spreadsheet template for a bulk customers we are not using this spreadsheet template we do have two templates for er customers one is one is for all the tca tables we do have spreadsheet template and this is the combination of your all your tca tables in a single sheet or it is provided like see here <coughs> this is organization information this is customer account this is customer account address and account address and your dff fields and so on and this is the cam facts but in our in we do have one more uh, spreadsheet template which they are splitted this customers Around 15 to 16 templates. So in generally in real time we are using uh, you know uh, bulk every day template only. We are not using any way this template because it's not possible to debug uh, while creating the customers in this template. In my experience, I'm not uh, you know I'm not seen any way used you know this template. So do not use this template also from your end also. I will try to download the template from our Oracle web content. This is our URL. Here you can find the customers. Something financial common module or financial Asia Pacific. customers data model yeah here customers data model we do have customer import so this is the template used to generate the comma separated values file for loading customer data from legacy and external sources to tca registry and the receivables here object one is this customer ecm account finance receivables and import and this is your xlsm template nothing but fbda spreadsheet template just click on that it will download your spreadsheet template and these are the control files used you know to create the customers all the control files and this is schedule process load uh, stage 1 load interface file for import import process name import trading community data in bulk the main import ess job name is import bulk customers okay and uh, effective interface tables are these are something you know Hedged IMP parties T, Hedged IMP party sites T, and Hedged locations T, Hedged accounts T, Hedged account sites, site uses, and account relationships, contacts, and customer profiles, and so on. So these are you know all the tables get affected 
if you are populating the data into all these tables. When you invoke this main import ESA job, import bulk customers, then whatever interface table data is there, it's validated and it's you know, uh, pushing into your base tables like widget parties, widget party sites and the locations and followed by your TCA tables. And this is your customer template. So this is the first common sheet instructions and CSV generation. This is Hedged IMP party state, you know, a data. And this is party sites. This is party site uses, accounts, account sites, account site uses, account contacts, contact points, contact roles, contacts, locations, and you know, profiles, methods, and something customer back. In our session, I will cover you know parties, party sites, party site uses, accounts, account sites, account site uses, and these locations. So almost seven tables. Uh, we use these seven sheets. We'll try to populate the data. So one by one, we'll try to populate the data. So before populating, here there is no reprocess mechanism in our AR customer FBDI process, we do not have any reprocess mechanism. In our spreadsheet, we do have insert update indicator. One of the column is there. It indicates two values, insert and update mode. If you want to insert the record, just you can use insert mode. If you want to update the record, just you can use update mode. So that it will keep on updating your records. If data is already existing in your interface tables. So here we are not anywhere you know, using interface tables as a backend. For example, if you see here, here there is a column insert update indicator. Just we need to populate whether it is insert or update. Insert or update. Each and every sheet, okay, each and every sheet does have two common columns, which is source system and source system reference virginal source system and virginal system reference here if you observe each fbda sheet we do have virginal system and virginal system reference two columns we do have in your fbda sheet nothing but again batch identifier virginal system virginal system reference and insert update indicator these four are common across all your fbda sheets in virgin system and virgin system reference, whatever sheet you are using, that's naming convention would be changed. For example, now we are in party sheet, right? Now party virgin system and party virgin system reference. Okay. If you are in party sites, now party site virgin system and party site virgin system reference. If you are in site uses, Here, party site use virgin system and party site use virgin system reference. So, what is the significance of these two? Here, something for party virgin system, they are using something D and B, and party virgin system reference, we do have some of the values. Now, we'll see what is the significance of party virgin system. This is nothing but your source system. So, what which source system you are going to use while uploading the data into your application. So this source system, you know, it should be configured in our application. For that, I guess the task name is I'm something manage.
I'll go here, manage sources. I guess this is manage sources. Not right task manage transaction. No, this is not this. something manage source applications or Also, not right to source. Source system confidence, source system entity, source system lookup. Yeah, manage trading community source systems. Is even you know source systems. Just you can search with your source system. Here, you know they will create all the source system for you. For example, if you are importing the data from EBS, then Central Resource will create a source system for you. Like this, something EBS type. Something is not good. Why? Here, enable for trading community members. And you may use the source system for enable for items, enable for order orchestration, and enable for assets. And here, yes, we can write anything. Something, just say when So the source is already exists, just we'll see that. This is your one of the you know source EBS source. Now it's you uh, know assigned enable for all the options. Now especially you now we need enable for trading community members. If it is enabled, then we can use this source code in your data template for virgin system column. For virgin system column, this value would be static for all your FBDA templates. In general, we are using in a real time mostly CSV one, which is a default ECA source system. Okay, just you can use party version system reference. Sorry, party version system or virginal system column across all your sheets. Just use CSV or whatever you define in your system. You can use the source system and party version system reference for this. Assume we do have edget parties and edget parties sites all and edget locations like this we do have tables right in our TC architecture. Now here edget parties we do have primary keys here party ID which is a primary key. In our party sites are primary keys party site ID and here edger location location ID is primary key. By the way, each and every table does have the primary keys, right? Edger parties party ID, party sites, party site ID, and location location ID. Now in our sheet also. This hedged IMP parties interface table okay, does have one of the column party virginal system reference, nothing but this is the primary key, primary key value of this record. This is the primary key value of this record. Okay. In order to create a customer, we need to you know follow primary key and foreign key relationship across all your sheets. So how you are maintaining primary key foreign key relationship nothing but before that 
each and every sheet does have virginal system reference column followed by your entity whether is party or party site or location virgin system or party site location virgin system so whatever straight forward virgin system reference your entity followed by columns are there those are referring primary key values now ledger party sites all does have a primary key which is for primary key and if you want to include parties if you want to get a you know sites information for your you know parties then we may include or we may introduce hedged parties and hedged party sites all both tables right here we are using in generally party id which is party id something right this is your you know hp dot party is nothing but foreign key from your hedged parties table and this is your sorry this is the primary key and this is the foreign key in your hps table party sites table the primary key and the foreign key relationship are using while you know introducing one or more tables right when you are introducing more than one table we are using in generally primary key to foreign key relationships so here also in your in your everyday template if you want to create the party sites this information may travel to your another sheet or this information whatever primary key information is there this information will refer to other sheet same as your table join conditions in your tca tables for example hedged cost accounts and hedged parties what is the join condition party id party id in the both tables we do have party id the same way here also just hedged party sites here party site virgin system reference is the primary key of this sheet and here referring we need party id right this is the party id which is party virgin system reference you can refer this value from your main sheet the way this information will travel to another sheets for example if we need locations this is locations location virgin system reference here is the primary key and we are using this location information in your party sites in party sites we do have party sites location id and edge locations location id right so here also we are using location virgin system reference which is you know foreign key here this is the primary key and this is the foreign key and this is the foreign key here we are using two columns which is party id and location id for your party site the way we can refer all your primary key foreign key relationship to across all your sheets now this is party site use for party site use we do have column here only this is the virginal system party site use reference this is the primary key information along with this we do have party virgin system and party virgin system reference party hedged parties and hedged party sites information we need to create a party site use okay this uh, you know this process we need to follow by creating the customers along with this batch identifier and your virgin system values would be same across all your sheets whether so whatever source system you are using just you can hard code the value here and insert update indicator based on your requirement so that is new customer you can create if you want update you can use update so it's not possible to delete if you want to uh, delete the customer just you can end the customer that's it so this is the process any doubts any clarifications anyone hopefully it's clear right how you know relationship would be established between one sheet to another sheet yeah if you are clear with this uh, every day process especially for er customer every day process almost whatever we do have ebd process in a saas applications it's almost you know maintaining the same logic 
across all the BDA templates, most probably, as my knowledge. Might be some of the process would be different, but this process would be inherited to all other process. Just we are using the reference primary, uh, whatever primary table information is there, we may use this information to other sheets as a foreign key relationship. Same as our table relationships. Uh, Vijay, don't we have the uh, array customers, uh, cust accounts table in, in uh, cloud? Array customers. Cust accounts. Yeah, we do have, right? Exit cust account. This is complete TCA tables only. Exit cust accounts, account sites, account site uses. You mean to say array customers? Yes, yes. Uh, so we don't no, have it at RA level, it is at no, no. level. In Artable, we do have RA customers, yet there is no RA customer sender. Okay. So whatever tables are yet there, just we need to populate the information. Okay, in the so these are new tables, tables actually. No, these are new tables, nothing but interface tables that these are. Again, you know, uh, base tables could be same. We have TCA tables only. Whatever here you are able to see, these are complete interface tables. When you submit import bulk customers, the main import is job it will validate your hedged IMP parties underscore T table data. It will validate and it will try to insert the data into a hedged parties, which is main table. Okay. Okay. So this is the process to create, you know, every day uh, for your customers. Now, we are pending with the batch identifier. So how will you create a batch identifier? Again, this batch identifier we create from our end only. This batch identifier from your uh, you know receivables building from the manage uh, the customer section. There we do have one of the tasks manage data import. There we can create you know batch name. Just it will generate one of the batch for us. Just we need to use that batch and populate across all your sheets. If any errors are there always we need to create a new batch it's not possible to you know process uh, with the old batch always we need to create a new batch if you want to import the customers okay now how will you verify the errors once process gets an error so how will you uh, debug your errors nothing but from the manage data import task you now we'll creating one of the batch right and then in this batch for each entity, for each entity wise, Oracle is provided in detail statistics for us. And it will generate one of the report also. In that report, uh, it will write the information, right? So and so version system reference and so and so version system reference values are not matching. And this is not imported. Or the values are mismatching. The report and how many customers are imported how many you know records are rejected and how many records in errors those statistics you will get you know very in depth very in detail by using batch identifier now how will you create a batch identifier here just navigate a billing here manage data import just select the manage data import here you can create a batch just click on the new batch name something gp2001 something the batch source system so whatever source system you are referring in your ABDA template the source system you can use here here you can you could see source system names not source system codes this is comma separated values which is cf Always you can use object is customer and consumer. Do not use anything and which is all are relevant for us. Just you can use customer and consumer. And estimated number of records and batch description if you want, you can provide anything here. Just save and close. If you provide estimated number of records, it won't validate anything, just our purpose only. Now this batch is created. We'll use this batch ID in our FBDA template to import the customers. Just open this batch here. Now, the first time when you create a batch, it is an active status. When you 
submit your import process or nothing but when you submit the main import job import bulk customers with this batch id for import bulk customers we do have the parameter batch id yes we need to provide this batch id against your main import job so that it will validate the data when you a moment submit your main import ess job the batch status would be pending and processing if it is error then completed with errors the batch status would be like that active and when you submit the process it's a pending and processing if it is error complete with errors if it is successfully completed then batch status could be complete these are status we will have so here it will update the total records it it will update total record with errors and how many records are imported to our application and here the support entity all the entities information you can find for example here parties information is there total records total inserted total updated merge request so these are not required total errors total imported and total warnings some of the information we do have so all the information you can find and it will provide the graph also for us and these are here you can find your count details if you want to see the report just click on here report so that it will generate a report for us and the report also it will show you you know entity wise errors here also you can find all your statistics like you know total records in batch inserted updated imported error out and warned here you can find all your you know error information if something errors are in hz parties here you will get an hz parties and it will pop it one of the table for us in the table we can find error information error information also very clear uh, you know if any errors are there it will uh, generate a meaningful error message for us so that we can debug so this is all about how to create a batch and how to you know find your statistics or your batch information and here there is no uh, interface tables we need to check while process the running okay and there is no purging mechanism also required for this because already oracle is provided insert and update modes for example already record is inserted if you are trying to create the same record with insert mode you know at the batch in an error status and it will create an error like already for this combination uh, records are created the records can be rejected so why we are not purging the data is nothing but always we are using you know a different batch id and we are using update mode which is insert update indicator so the reason we are not using any interface tables as a backend now we'll try to populate the data for you know hz parties party sites and the locations before that you know first take a backup of the sheet this is our customer import template Our customer template, which is a reference sheet. And you can copy paste this as a reference sheet, which is you know backup or friends. Now we are open. The reference sheet right here. This enable content. If you observe here, there is no ADF desktop indicator feature is enabled for the receivables here. See here, there is no ADF features are available for us here. 
current errors or whatever it is. For payables, again, it's enabled. For fixed assets, and again, it's enabled. Now, this is our reference sheet. Just try to delete all the data from your reference data sheet. Delete this. And account size and account site uses something relationships. Here the most complex process is you no know, while creating the contacts. Always we need to use subject IDs and object IDs, right? So be careful when you're working with for the contacts so before creating the contacts first we need to create a person and that person we need to use as a contact whether it is email or you know phone whatever it may be this is your locations a relationship so before you know working with this process just try to understand uh, this your oracle data ones how they are uh, referring uh, this primary keys and foreign keys this system reference values across all the sheets just you can uh, get a good knowledge on this so that and you can start on this here just try to you know get a familiar with a video template sheet all the data here just again so whatever reference is there just you can copy here and you can you know maintain backup copy just you can backup which is you know empty because multiple times this sheet may you know crash again we need to take a you know a fresh everyday template the reason always Now open this fresh MBDA template and try to populate the information. So when you working, when you import in the customers from the on-premise systems, especially, then we may derive SQLs or we may write SQL statements in order to populate your primary keys and foreign keys. So how will you refer the primary keys and foreign keys in your SQL statement is nothing but in our hardware system already we do have all your base tables, right? The base tables we do have primary keys and foreign keys. Just use those information, same as, you know, while extracting the data. This is the batch identifier. Now we are in HZ parties table, party version system reference CSV and party version system reference something ZP, it's gone, something 005 underscore P. So I'm referring, which is ZP005 naming convention followed by P is nothing but party sheet, this is. Any errors are there in your uh, against your batch, then it will generate an error with a, this key value. So that by using this, you can identify. Now uh, there is an error in your party sheet. Insert update indicator is insert. Party type is organization. Party number not required. Salutation if you want to require, you can use Mr. and Mrs. Whatever it may be. And party usage code customer you can write. And organization name something. GP005 something Dell customer. This is your populated information. This is your data. Which I think data is at line number 73. Now see, we are in 74th row. So be careful when you're working with this area. It's a problem. Okay. This is version system, version system reference, which is a primary key. Insert update indicator. Party type is your 
organization if you want to create a person so you can select as a person and your party usage code an organization name nothing but customer name and your batch identifier will populate later at that time we we'll copy paste this batch identifier across all your sheets first we need to you know populate then we'll try to copy paste and party sites here party sites first try to populate you know primary key information csv system version system reference party version site version system reference which is a primary key value something zip 005 underscore ts which is party site and insert update indicator is insert party site name you can use you know test site or something yes site any could be party site number if you want you can use something party site from date you can use yyy mmdd 2020 09 and 18 just change your format and mail stop not refresh identifying address just you can you know click on yes and site language and those are not required the these are dfs columns not required and these so not required so what is the use we can copy it here now here we need two foreign keys information which is parties and which is locations now we are done with our parties information just you can populate Here party version system CSV and location version system CSV. Just you can blindly, uh, you know, populate this information. Now try to copy paste party version system reference from your primary key information. This is your party version system reference. Just copy and paste your as a form. Party version system reference here. Now we need the location information. This is your location. Location version system reference CSV and primary key something location and insert update indicator is insert and we need address details right? Just we we'll try to uh, get the address details whatever this we create as a customer. Otherwise we'll get keep on get validation errors. You can use any one customer. None of these apps are not there. Okay, yeah, there is one address is there. Just open this site and try to copy this address. This is our address. For United States, there is no address. created one of the customer right the 
try to populate this information, which is the United States county and followed by your country, which is US, United States. You can provide the code, address line one, something line one, and you can provide line two and city, so on, so city value. You can provide the city, and we need state something CEO and your postal code and followed by county the county right so this is your proper address information now we can use this location primary key to your party sites as a foreign key this is your location virgin system research which is your foreign key the way you can refer all your primary keys and foreign keys to across all your sheets save this sheet now try to populate you know batch id here Here, manage data import. Just a moment. This is your batch ID. Just copy the batch ID and try to first paste in your you know notepad and copy from here. Otherwise, it will not provide a, one of the hyper. It will you know copy paste the hyperlink here. Here batch identifier. Or you can you know just verify here. Just copy the batch ID here. You can paste here. You know it will create like this. Again, you need to change the format and all. So instead of that, just you can copy paste. From to here. This is a batch identifier, just copy this. This is a batch identifier for party sites, and you can go for you know the locations. This is the location. Now we are done with parties, party sites, and the location. Just here instruction CSV and generation. Just click on instruction CSV and generation, generate CSV file, and here you can. And try to save. Here you can get a pop-up like CSV generated and zip. CSV and zip file have been created. This message will not pop up for your general API template. For some of the API template, we may get this message. For some of the API templates, will not get this. Just click on OK. Here, this is your API zip file. Now we are populated into three sheets. These are your three sheets, CSV sheets. Now try to submit stage one. Here tools, schedule process, schedule new process, load interface. The same concept. Nothing is changed. For every for every every day process, we do have two stages. Load load interface is file for import and main import and load interface file for import does have two parameters one is import process and the data file and import process here import trading community data in bulk and you can find this import process name in your in oracle web content against your every day process here 
here you can select import trading community data in bulk and you can select the data file whatever we have been zip choose file Just click on OK and submit the code. Here we do have three CSV sheets, right? Now nothing but now the process is referring three control files. Nothing but three SQL uh, loader programs are invoking for your three sheets. So indirectly load transfer to file will invoke three times for each sheet. Again, it's your load interface file for import. First, it will transfer the file to your UCM location. Then after, it will try to unzip the file from that location and try to invoke your CSV sheets followed by your load transfer to file. As of now, we are not used any reference data sets, right? The reference data set will come into picture for account sites and account site users. I'm not sure why it's taking more time for load interface file for input. In general, you know. With the minimal time, minimal time it will execute the process. Now transfer file is submitted. Now see load file to interface. This is submitted three times for your three files. Now process gets succeeded, and you can verify your load interface file for import also gets succeeded. Just again new process for your main process which is import bulk customers. You know, job to automatically import customer objects and related entities into the TCA registry. Click on OK. Here you can provide the batch ID or you can provide the batch name also. No problem. This is your batch ID. Okay. If you want to use any parameters, you can use source system and the object, customer and consumer, and Here you can use you know, check for duplicates within the batch before import. If any duplicate value is there, it will validate. Select action for person, select action for addresses. Select action for addresses, nothing but keep all duplicates, remove all the duplicates. If any duplicate addresses are there from major location, just it will try to remove the duplicates and it will try to process. So do not use this you know, uh, parameters and all. We may get confused while uh, if you select this parameters anything because Oracle is providing very in detail, uh, you know, error information for us against your batch ID. There itself you can give up if any errors are there. Just try to submit the process. Now it will uh, try to, you know, submit some more child jobs in order to validate your addresses, party sites and the locations and parties information. Import bulk customer data submitted one of the child job import data for receivables. Now it's submitted perform match validation and load process for import. This job, this ESA job will submit against your each file. We do have three files, right? Now it will try to submit three times. Perform match validation and load process for import. This ESA job is not there in your earlier version. Now this ESA job is introduced in your current version 20C. Earlier we do have only import bulk customer data and it will submit import data for receivables only. Now they are introduced in this new ESA jobs for each file. Now you can verify here, here is a batch. 
just refresh here. This is our batch, and here just you can refresh here. Now it's a processing status. Just open your batch here. Now total records are three. Out of total records three, it's batch still processing. One record is already in error. Okay. Here you can navigate. So what is the error record? Just you can verify. Error is one, which is party site. Location and party tables also you know inserted it here. Just you can cancel here again. Open here so that you know statistics will be updated. Now see total imported one total records with errors two. Now here just you can verify what are the imported successfully location which is imported successfully parties and party sites are in error status. Now here you can find you know graph also how your process takes the performance and you can click on the report here just you will get an errors. Now here dash status still processing. Here also total records in batch three. Total records are inserted one. Total records imported one and error out two. So error. You must provide a varied value for the attribute party site ID in ZP zero zero five PS. Nothing but here you can find party sites error are there in your party sites and the error is you must provide a varied value for the attribute party site ID. So what's the error with this? This is already we have provided zip is zero zero five ps. So it's giving an error again. Forty five name, forty five number, some date, address, site. Not sure what is the error exactly because it should be valid the record already we have part is right right. Okay, okay. We we'll try to you know resolve tomorrow for this. Again, if you will reprocess the same record, again you need to create a new batch and populate the new batch here and try to import the records. Okay. This is something related to you.